Hello everyone and welcome to Armor Archives again. I am Forrest and with me as always in this series, my wife KG. Woot. <laughs> she is so enthused. We had to um we had to block her phones cuz she bought a new phone and is trying to transfer everything from her old one to her new one and it's taking an eternity to do so. I have a lot of memes. Do not judge me. You may you never know when you're going to need a meme. Like I said before we start recording, you should like make your own digital meme library for everyone to access. Maybe. I think, I think there are people out there who would appreciate that. I do have lots of Marvel memes. Yes. Who knows? I'm just going to throw that out there. Maybe that'll be a bonus content. The meme the meme library. The meme library. <laughs> So, in the background, if you hear a popping sound, worry not. That is the sound of um, a um, live stream of a camp, or not a campfire, but a fireplace on our TV. I wanted to do one of those live streams that also had Christmas music in the background, too, but I really don't want to get any more copyright claims than I've, you know, gotten so far. So, this is the best we can do. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're into, which reminds me. We're in December now. This is the last Armor Archives episode of 2020. Woo! So, yes, it's insane. We're almost to the end of the year. Um, I am only, uh, after this, there will just be one more video um, for the Van Zot Media channel I'm releasing before the year is out, and that's it. You know, that's it for Van Zot Media this year. Um, well, of course, we'll be, you know, we're not taking a week's break or anything like that. We'll be... Excuse me. We'll be back um, next month, and we have we're working on a couple of projects right now. Currently, that um, hold on. We're working on a couple of projects currently that we're not going to announce just yet because we want to make sure there's enough enough there that's uh, worth sharing. But we're really excited for some of the, for some of this stuff. And we also want to well, thank actually we're excited for all of it, but And we also want to thank all of you for supporting us these last 3 months since we started. It's been really meant a lot to us. And we hope you continue to support us in the future. Yes, please keep subscribing, keep liking our videos, and uh, I just you know, we we started in such a tiny tiny place uh, this year. Um, but I do really believe that we're going to go bigger next year. Um, keep looking out for the second episode of Mortal Kombat Oblivion if you guys, uh, watched or listened, excuse me, listened to the first episode. Um, it is in progress and I am working on it. No, don't look. <laughs> She's trying to get a sneak, uh, sneak peek at the phones. Uh, anyway, so Armor Archives, what... What what were the last five episodes again? Episodes uh, number... Episodes 16 through 20, I believe. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. yeah okay. Episodes 16 through 20. We've just finished the Rambaral arc of the show. So you said there were 40. There are 40 episodes in Mobile Suit Gundam, right? 42. 42. Okay, Techni so... Techni technically there's 43, but there's one episode that um, just never really got aired or it's sort of like a lost episode type, type thing. Okay. So we are more or less halfway through. Kind yes, of. Almost. Almost. One more episode after this and then we'll be halfway there. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. But yeah, here we are. Um, the last five episodes, which, uh, you know, I know we, we bring up this show on occasion because this is just so awesome and it keeps getting better every week. These last couple episodes kind of reminded me of The Mandalorian a little bit. How so? Um, mostly because it was very... The, the conflict was very scaled down these last couple episodes. One episode was just uh, Amaro wandering through the desert and then coming across a small town where, very conveniently, Rumble Row and... Rumble Raw. Rumble Raw and... Um, Rumble Row. Can I just call him Rumble Row for convenience? No, it's na his name is Rumble Raw. No? Okay. Rumble Raw. Rumble Raw. Rumble Row. Yes. Rumble Row. Can I just call him Row? Sure. Row. Row. Raul, la 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 la. <laughs> um, Raul, yes. We're very conveniently Raul and, um, and that one woman. Haman. Haman, um, came to the same place, that same restaurant or bar that Amro was in. Very convenient, by the way. Plot convenience. Uh huh. And besides, they, I was, they were chasing after them anyway, so they were pretty close by to begin with. Right. Mm. So let's go over. Go, let's go over some of these episodes. First of all, um, there was an episode where it was the um, 
the Xeon soldiers who came up with the plan to plant those bombs all over the Gundam mobile suit to try to blow it up. Yeah, and then when they saw Armuro removing them, they're like, good on you, kid. That's good on you, kid. <laughs> I mean, it was, so, it was so bizarre. They drove away at the end of the episode, basically, you know, um, calling Armuro out for being cool that he was able to do that stuff. So where, I, I, um, so where were the stakes again? <laughs> I think it was more or less the the thing that um, even people on, uh, on opposite sides can still have respect for each other. Like, I mean, if it, I bet they were expecting uh, the pilot of the suit to just run away and leave it to blow up. They didn't expect him to try to get out there and you know try to remove them. Mm, sure. Yeah. Um. I thought. I like. I don't know. I just. I thought that was interesting. Kind of weird though. I did like the fact that um, it was showing how. It was within this group of episodes that Amuro ran away, right? Yes. Okay, so honestly, uh, I'm I'm on Amuro's side for that. Okay. What, uh, how, I'm on Amuro's side with that. What 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 does your there's view? nothing there's literally nothing like oh uh, like I it's just the crew the crew itself mm -hmm. for the most part with the possible exception of Frau mm -hmm. um. Really didn't show a whole lot of appreciation for what Armuro does, and they pushed him. And I get it; it's war, you know. You, um, it doesn't matter if you're tired; you just have to keep uh, pushing yourself. But uh, and you have to, you know, keep pushing your own soldiers or whatever. But I was completely with Armuro on this, running away like that. It just made the story interesting. You know? I'm. I would. Let, I'll be the devil's advocate and si and be and tell you what the crew side. They weren't exactly not appreciative. They understood the strain he was under and how much it was affecting him because, you know, there's so a lot the Bright and Mirai are older than him, so they've seen a lot more and under, and experienced a lot more. So they understand burnout and um ex and exhaustion. Mm -hmm. So they were just trying to in their minds, they thought they were helping him by taking him off Gundam and replacing him with someone else. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't be under that mental strain anymore. But, which um, is funny, which it, it is kind of ironic when you think about it, because that means um, Armour was frustrated. Armour was frustrated and angry when they kept asking him to uh, get in the mobile suit. And then they're like, okay, you know what? Fine. We'll step back and uh, we won't ask you to get in the mobile suit. We'll have someone else do it. And Armour was like, no! Wait, but it also, so, <laughs> it's a bit of character development, but it also kind of shows that Armour right now... Everything about him is now revolving around the suit. He, what's the, there's a word for it. I'm just, I can't think of it. Like, he's dependent on the suit. No, he okay. thinks, mm -hmm. he, he, his, his sense of identity is now tied with the suit. He's the, he's the pilot. He's the one who's saving White Base and the crew from all these eons chasing after him. Mm -hmm. uh, chasing after them. So, he's the hero. And his... In his teenager mind, he's being the hero, <laughs> and in his mind, he's he's not getting the appreciation he thinks he deserves for doing that. And so when they're telling him, hey, we'll let someone else pilot it, he's like, no, you're taking away that job, that position of hero from me. <laughs> I don't want to do it, but, I, but I'm the only one that wants to do it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you get, you get what I mean. You, especially with, for someone that young, giving them... That's giving him, giving, letting a person that young get the position of hero it is probably pretty much a huge ego swelling for them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um... Which is, which is, of course, also revolves back to the PTSD thing. Right. So, can we talk about Raul's, it's hard to, like, say, like... Rambo Raul. You no, know, I know, but Raul, like... It's hard to say it when you you need to say Rouse something, you know. Okay. Rouse. Like, his whole, like, death by suicide, technically. First of all, um, this is a kid's show, right? Yes. Oh, I forgot it was. Anyway. Just, but you forget something. It's a Japanese kid's mm -hmm, show. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, they're having, um... Japanese anime uh, artists on that new announced Star Wars series Visions. I can't wait to see what they do with that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we actually, actually, we had a conversation. Uh, the listeners don't know. We know, but the listeners don't know that we had a conversation the other day where what if the very um, director of uh, Gundam, you know, mm -hmm. um, directed a 
a Star Wars anime short. Then it goes full circle, right? Yep, mm-hmm. Gundam was inspired by Star Wars, and then now Star Wars would have something revolving around Gundam. Yeah. So, anyway, just something to throw out there that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so death by suicide. Um, necessary or unnecessary? Because, honestly, I'm I'm torn on this. I, it felt very out of nowhere, out of left field, very random. I get well, that he's an honorable guy, and, of course, he would... Of course, he would sacrifice himself for, you know, his side, but this, I, I expected him to live longer. Well, think about it. He was surrounded on all sides by the enemy, and being the honorable warrior guy he is, he wouldn't want to, he wouldn't want to be taken prisoner. He'll never take me alive, coppers. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Um, I you... liked that, I liked that little, that, I don't know, it was just a nice touch. I don't even know if I was supposed to appreciate it as much as I do but I did I did kind of like anything you want to in this show. <laughs> I did kind of like how um you know Amuro in the suit uh excuse me holds out uh his hand as if to catch Ral when he's falling and mm-hmm. he just blows up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um what do, what do you speaking of Rumble Ral, what did you think of his little monologue to Amuro when they were fighting and he's like Everything you've been able to do right now has been up to the suit. Has been the suit, not you. You know, it reminds me of the line from the first Avengers movie when Tony Stark says, "Everything special about you came out of a bottle." Mm-hmm. He's not wrong, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, really, he's not wrong. Although, th- I feel like that line somewhat contradicts um, uh, what we got to see Amro do in earlier episodes, where he it, he didn't. He couldn't be in the suit to detach all those bombs. That was him. Right. You know, and I mean, no, that's not the same as um, having skills in a fight or battle or whatever. But that's still, um, what do you call that? Ingenuity? Yeah. Or like, you know, that's still using your head. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know that Armoro is good at that. He's a survivor at heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did like that. You know, I did like that. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, it's like, yeah, you have this cool overpowered suit, you know, so... Most of your victories come from essentially cheating in a giant suit, but mm-hmm. I mean that's a whole another discussion in and of itself. About I mean, that's like that's like saying, oh, would you have been able to kill a man if you didn't have a gun? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, then if that's if you're going to propose that kind of argument here in that context, then you would have to propose it in just about any scenario <laughs> where someone kills another in war. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. Well, it is a bit more complicated because it is you are piloting a giant suit. There is some innate mm-hmm. skills that have to come along with piloting a giant a giant mech suit. Mm-hmm. So it is a bit different than just saying a gun. Anybody can learn to use a gun. It takes a lot of training to learn how to pilot a mobile suit. Right. Um, and be good at it. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Okay. Will Amuro and Frau ever actually get together? I will not say so. And will Amuro be able to, you know... Um, what what's the what's the phrase? Um, uh, oh, get his crap together! <laughs> like I won't say anything. Okay. Okay. I won't say anything. Was it within these five episodes that like Armor walked in on Frau in that one scene? It might have been like an earlier episode. I don't remember. Okay. Um, it's so like the only scene. Speaking of the <laughs> only scene involving like some kind of like flirtation. It wasn't even flirting, it was just awkward. Yeah. No, no the, flirt, the only flirting came was from Haman. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> yeah, what's up with Haman? What's her case? What's her problem? <laughs> like, well, she, here's the, here's she's the practically pro- hitting on a, to, what, a 15. 15 year old boy. And she's clearly older. Yes. Like, at least 15 years older. Speaking of um, Haman, what did you think of her relationship between her with Rambaral? The ambiguous relationship she has with Rambaral. How is it ambiguous? It was pretty. No, I mean center. like if it's ambiguous whether or not they're married or not. I thought that was obvious too. You thought you think they're married? Yeah, and and why would they make that vague? I don't know. They just never say mm. this is my wife, right? Or this is my husband. They just call each other dear, or my love. But I mean, I don't call you my wife all the time around other people. Well, you still introduce me to strangers like, hey, this is my wife. Yeah, or at least I sure hope so. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay. but we never get that with those two, so I feel like I get, it gives them that bit of ambiguity, which is well, kind of bold for a show back in the 70s. But wouldn't everyone in the Zeons know their rela- the nature of their relationship anyway? Well, Thus... yeah, but they could be boyfriend-girlfriend. Mm, true. Yeah. 
Um, where's, um, where's the guy who killed the other guy in the 10th episode? Oh, Shar? Yeah. He's somewhere. Okay. But he's, it just seemed to, he kind of just seemed to fall off the face of the earth. No, he didn't fall off the face of the earth. He's just off doing something else. Okay, fair. But he will come back. I will tell you that. All right. Like when? I won't say when because I don't. <laughs> okay. Because I don't remember. We just went through what ten episodes without him. Yeah. So yeah. We um, had to make room for Rob Barral. <laughs> but he's dead now, and I'm just kind of wondering what the point of his arc was. Well, Shar is more of a personal rival for Amaro, and Rob Barral is sort of the reality check. Hmm. With the whole line of everything about everything you everything you've done has been the suit's doing, not yours, mm-hmm. which is kind of a reality check for him. Where maybe he's like, yeah, maybe he's right. Yeah, maybe, okay, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of I think what also helps him t- come back mm-hmm. to the white base instead of deserting them. Mm-hmm. Well, we would be remiss not to mention the death of Ryu. Ryu. We should in, probably in we probably should episode. mention yeah, yeah we probably should talk about that that is the de- it but, is a death it is the first death of a main of a main character I'm very I feel so bad for him sixty percent of sixty percent of his dialogue was um, him sounding constipated in his last episode I don't even know how he gets from like you don't even get to see how he gets from point A to point B with that kind of pain it's mm-hmm. like one minute he's sitting against the wall talking to um. Uh, the captain? Mm-hmm. No, Amaro. He was sitting against the wall talking to Amaro. No, before that. Oh, yeah. And then and then all of a sudden, he's sitting in, you know, he's sitting against the door talking to Amaro, and I'm like, how did you get all the way there? Well, it's not you like know, his in legs are... state of pain. His legs aren't hurting. It was his chest that he got shot in. Yeah. And he's walking around going, <laughs> Well, He also, sounds very constipated. He's probably also on a bunch of adrenaline. Probably. Adrenaline is a heck of a drug. Actually, there was a lot of emphasis on that sweat on his face. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those that, that kind of funny animation where it's like very clear droplets. Mm-hmm. Are... So, what did you think of the death of Ryu? Since it is sort of the mid, it is sort of a mid series event. I liked it. I didn't like the funeral that accompanied it. It was a bit cheesy, it, but I'm pretty sure it was really cheesy. cheesy. But you under, but at least you understand. You Characters liked... falling on their knees, you know, like. The weird, like, sounds of crying and stuff like that. The way the captain had, like, his eyes clen- <laughs> clenched shut. It was like, yes! <laughs> like, it was just really... It was weird, it was awkward, and it took me out of it. You right. know, for what could have been a great scene. You know, when Darth Vader yells no in Revenge of the Sith, that's better than this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at least you understand... You, you like what... You like the, the lead-up to the funeral. You like at least the death part. I mean, I don't like anybody dying, but yeah, you know, that worked out. Mm-hmm. It's a main character, and again, it's another reality check for the crew. Right. Yeah. They've been fine up until they've been fine. They haven't really lost a lot of people. How many people do they actually have, though? We've only seen maybe six or seven people <laughs> in the last five episodes. Well, there's six or seven main people, main crew members. Do they have fleets? Is this the resistance from the sequel trilogy where they have almost nothing? Like, I'm confused. Well, there's this, this is the one ship out of the Earth Federation fleet. Okay. But this, okay. Is, the, but this is the ship we well, follow. Where's everyone else? Doing other things. Okay. <laughs> I am so. I mean, I like the fact that you know the scale isn't too insanely high, but still. It, well, we're we are as we as we mentioned in the last few episodes, we are approaching Odessa Day, mm-hmm. which is supposed to be this big offensive against the Zeon, where you know more ships would be. So we are going to see. I will tell you this: we are going to see more of the fleet, the Earth Federation fleet, in the future. But right now, since we're following the White Base, and since basically the Earth Federation doesn't know what to do with it, they're just like. Just, just keep going. Just go. Just do what you're doing right now, and you'll be fine. Well, the last and, um, and the white base is like we're being chased by everybody. <laughs> well, like the last, um, the last five episodes, um, the last five episodes were at least a little more of a character study. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about like fleet to fleet battles or, mm-hmm. or even. Or even necessarily giant robots um, killing each other. Mm-hmm. Giant suits killing each other. There's a difference. Yes. Um, you know, no, this was just kind of a character study for Amuro and his own psychological, his own psyche. Mm-hmm. There's that weird shot when he's um, locked up and he, like, clenches his fist, puts it out, like, as if to <laughs> fist bump someone, and the lighting, like, and the lighting cloaks his face mm-hmm. except his eyes. I'm like, that is so heavy-handed. <laughs> 
I get where they're going with it, but it's so heavy-handed. It wasn't then, heavy-handed back then. I guess not. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty positive standards for what's heavy-handed is stay stay about the same. So, um, speaking of the rest of the White Face crew, and what did you, what did what did these last five episodes give you? How, how did they help develop them for you? Let's start with Frau. Um, Frau's pushy. She's pushy. Yeah. Explain. She's just very pushy. I don't think she understands Amro. Like, she doesn't understand Amro's situation here. She's not the one in the suit. She was in the suit for one episode, right? No, that was Sayla. Okay, okay. There we go. Try it. Yeah, <laughs> trying to remember that. Um. Yeah, like... I don't know. I mean, everyone kind of has, like, these somewhat, like, one-note personalities. I know I'm saying a lot of negative things, but I'll get to the positive near the end. Okay. Because there's, there's quite a bit there. Yeah. You know. I, I enjoy this to a certain extent. Right. But let me just, like, kind of, to maybe um, help myself think about it a little bit more, why don't I um, take the question back to you about oh. the crew? Well, you're, I already know about the crew. I'm asking you as a first-time viewer. Oh, okay. Well, for the say, uh, Well, for the listeners, why don't you explain Explain what? Well, like, what you think of the crew, essentially. I can't say what I think about the crew, because I know what's going to happen to the crew. How about up to this point? Can you do that? That's kind of hard when you have the full context. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why, I asked, that's why I've been asking you, because you're the, one, you're the first time viewer. This is your first time experiencing these characters. How are they presenting themselves to you? The only characters that I um, honestly cared... Um, hold on. Bless you. I'll cut that out. Mm. The only characters I really cared about in these last five episodes were Armoro, um, Raoul, right? Yes. Bless you. Thank you. Mm. Raoul and Haro. I'm kidding. I would never <laughs> care for that stupid ball. That's why we're going in order. So if you think Frau is pushy because she doesn't understand what Amuro, what Amuro's going through. And yeah. What about Bright? Bright's the mean one, right? Bright's the captain. Oh. He's all, he's all right. What's the reason I should care for him as a person? Because he's the captain. Uh, and he's trying to. So by default. And he's also know. nineteen and trying to hold together a. He's what? Nineteen. He's nineteen. We mentioned this in the last episode. How did you forget already? I because when I look at the captain, <laughs> I don't think nineteen. He looks like he's about thirty. Sounds like he's about thirty. He's nineteen. Yeah. No one. No one acts their age here in this show, or like sounds like them. So let me guess. Is Frau twelve? No, Which she's would the make same... earlier episodes really awkward. No, she's the same age as Amuro. Okay. See, I feel better now. Mm -hmm. At least knowing that I was close with that. I mean, it's possible for 19-year-olds to look older and sound older. I know. But this? <laughs> with Bright? Um, I... Essentially, essentially, here's the reason why I liked these last five episodes. Okay, you ready for this? Yes. Um... I didn't really like them for Bright or Frau or even Ryu. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I got that right. Good job. Um, I didn't like these last five episodes because of them. Honestly, they could be completely out of the story and I wouldn't have noticed. Um, what I was most uh, um, interested in or most fascinated with was um, how these episodes played around with Armour's, um psychology. Like how he was you know how the war mm -hmm. you know affects this 15 year old mind mm -hmm. you know what that does for him kind of the the combination of anger superiority mm -hmm. i mean when you get to fight in a giant suit and blow other people <laughs> up with it you'd feel and a little bit and people are praising you for it yeah you'd feel a little superior absolutely um but just kind of that side of hero but also you know not not I wouldn't call him a fallen hero, because right. it's not like he's evil. No. And I wouldn't call him anti-hero either. He's just a person with problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
there's both a positive, uh, you know, there's a both there's both a positive side to what he does and a very very negative side. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be honest, if I was to kind of like throw in my two cents, I really don't think he's going to stay involved in the war itself. I think the series is going to end with the war still going and um, Amuro leaving it behind. Hmm. Boom. I know that in your mind you're just like. You're wrong. <laughs> I won't say <laughs> but anything. But I guess we'll see. I won't say anything. But hey, if it does end that way, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I, I know. <laughs> well, let's at least talk about a character who did get a bit of character development and backstory in these last five episodes. Sayla. Yellow haired chick, right? Yes. Okay. Because uh, Romba Rob reveals that... Um, her father was na- that he used to oh, yeah, that's right. father. Yeah, that that was that was weird. You remember that moment when he <laughs> runs into her and he's like, uh, you know, I'm Rumble Rao. Um, my father was such and such. And, Jimbo Rao. Yeah, my father was Jimbo Rao, and he's like spitting out all this exposition very unnaturally. You know, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. But that, mean, did... that means she was on the basically. That means she was on the Zeon side. And now she's on the Federation side. But her brother, Char, is still on the Xeon side. Yeah. I mean, I, I all in all I all in all enjoy these episodes. Is it one of the best shows I've ever seen? No. Well, we're still only halfway through it. You think I'm going to change my mind? I think you will. It does. There, there are a lot more character studies and character moments. Mm-hmm. And a lot, and way more plot points to reveal. Yeah. And way more characters that are going to die. <laughs> I think I said this in a previous episode of Armor Archives, but, you know, the I guess the most, the best thing about this show is, like, it's, you know, it's fun, and at times it's uh, somewhat insightful, but it is undeniably, it, you know, it is undeniably cheesy, but it's kind of, like, cheesy in a fun way. Star Wars is just so cheesy if you watch through A New Hope. It is, yeah. Like, um, Leia's constantly switching accent. <laughs> right true um don't look how is it still on photos oh you shouldn't have had so many photos it's all right it'll get done soon that's um kg's phone um it'll all get transferred except you will probably have to uh at least plug your iphone 6 into the wall mm-hmm. so that it doesn't die it's at 34 percent that's pretty bad um it was at 42 when you started um all right wow oh so kg as always give us a little sneak peek into what to expect in the next five episodes and people if you're if you're thinking if you're you're probably already typing comments into the comments section right now to just talk uh to say how stupid i am (laughs) if if you are if you are doing that right now Please. Oh wait! Before I give our sneak peek. No, if you if you're doing that right now, please, please, just keep going because <laughs> I'm just very, I'm very curious. Oh, we also have another announcement we have to make before I give our little sneak peek. Um, after the sneak peek, okay. we'll get we'll get all that you know Van Zot stuff covered. All right. If so, with Ron Baral and Haman out of the way, in terms of uh. In terms of them going after White Base, we are now approaching Odessa Day, which is where they're going, which is where the Earth Federation is going to attack um, Captain Makuve, a subordinate of, Cassil- of Lady Cassilia, Lady mm-hmm. Cassilia Zabi, mm-hmm. and destroy it so that the Zeons can't ha- can't have access to those important resources to make more things that to make more weapons. Right. So we will see the. We will see what happens on Odessa Day, the mm-hmm. consequences of Odessa Day, mm-hmm. and we'll see if Shar decides to come back. Interesting. Okay. But, and we will also see who will become the next art villain that the White Base will have to face. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that will all be covered in 2021. We made it, guys. Ooh. We survived. Ooh. <sighs> Anyway, all right. Just a couple things uh, for um, for any of you who uh, watch or listen to our other content outside of the series. We have a couple things to throw out there. Go on ahead. First of all, we are going to be starting a Patreon page. For we will have membership tiers as always with most Patreon pages. Um, we can't give too many details about it because we're still figuring it out. But keep an eye out for the announcement of our Patreon page being up and go check it out. 
Awesome. Yeah, it's a big deal. We were originally not going to do Patreon. We heard that we heard that Patreon um, got into some hot water with um, some, excuse me, some YouTubers, some creators, but... A lot of people still use it, and... A lot of people still use it, and uh, we're, we're just going to be perfectly honest here on this episode. We have not really had much luck on coffee. We'll still have coffee, because it offers some things that Patreon doesn't, but... Um, and I know of, I've heard of creators out there who have both, but we're going to, um, we're going to shoot for Patreon. Okay. We're going to try to expand. And, um, so I, I, um, aside from that, uh, there will be, uh, an in interview with a forest, um, this month to just, uh, round all that out. Uh, there will probably be at least one more episode of my podcast screaming and, um, there will be some... Some bonus content, some bonus videos. I'm actually about to start uh, editing an Among Us video um, that KG and I uh, did recording for, uh, and we were with Matt the Dane and a couple of couple of friends of ours, couple of friends of his, and uh, it was a really fun time. And um, so that's going to be a video I'm going to put together, and then um, some bonus content for Mortal Kombat Oblivion coming up. Some just some really cool stuff. To check out and um oh we will also be starting be starting to post uh consistent content schedules so you guys can keep up and know what's coming up ahead in the coming months yeah um we're gonna start posting those on uh the vanzot media facebook page because since no one looks at our coffee uh anyway um decided let's put it somewhere where more people can see it and i and where we know we actually have people following our page so that'll be helpful be sure to check out Red Nordic Potato, the gaming YouTube channel. Um, a couple of personal friends of mine um, host that, uh, host and manage that channel, and I edit videos for them. So uh, check them out. Um, give them a give them a like. Give them comments. Give them subscribes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for just all the, uh, the the views that you've given our videos and the the likes that you've given our videos. There are so many ways that we can grow bigger, and that's what next year is going to be all about. So, is there anything you want to add there, KG? Nope. Just keep look, keep an eye out for all those announcements. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time on Armor Archives, and we'll see you here in 2021. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.